If I can get through the opening segment without the birds screaming, it's going to be a miracle. Since the last video, I have made not really much of anything because I have been really burnt out lately. But crocheting is the only thing that keeps my mind from working like it's supposed to and it keeps me from thinking. So I just keep doing it. In an effort to use up all of the granny squares, these ones that were tormenting me, I just glued these two to felt and they're going to be coasters. And then I made this one into like a crossbody pouch, but it came out like the size of a child for a child, so I obviously don't get to use it. And I also made this one that I had these granny squares just sitting around from the very first grocery bag that I made, which is what this video is about making a granny square grocery bag because apparently I'm just addicted to making them even though if you ask me if I hate granny squares I would say yes so I went to Walmart and I bought this yarn that I had been dreaming about since I first saw her in the store it's Red Heart Super Saver it's called Bon Bon Print and so I'm using this for the center so this for the center and then I'm going around the edges with black because I don't think any other color would quite look right with such a wide array of colors, which this is actually pretty true to color on screen, which I'm surprised because usually it's not. Um, although I will say the orange looking color is more of a pink, so I guess maybe I lied and it's not true to color and I'm sorry for lying to you. But I made 13 of these and out of one skein, this is all I have left. So I might... I'm just going to have to talk over the birds because that one, Chloe, will not be quiet ever. So out of one skein, this is all I have left. So I might use this to make a two-tone hat. I think that would look really cool. I just love this yarn. And I'm so glad that I bought two skeins of it because I kind of want to buy all of them and just hoard it in my room because I love this yarn so much. So I'm going around the outside with black. And so they look like this. And I have to make 13. And I made, last night I got through six of these. So I have a little more than halfway to go before I get to sew it all into a bag. Or crochet, I guess I'm not taking out my sewing machine for this. Absolutely not. So, aside from that, and, and working on these, the only other thing I've made is this, which is Pochita from Chainsaw Man, the anime. Um, the character is obviously a chainsaw, which is how the anime got its name. So this is a little handle, and, and this pattern is by... I'll have to put a picture of it right here. Um, because I forgot, but it's a free pattern on Instagram that I found on my crochet page. And then I just reused this. Whoop, just kidding. You don't get to see. This, um, I saved these off of my bird toys, that, or the toys that I buy for the birds, just because I, I like them. So I saved them. Um, and then, aside from all that, the only thing I'm going to be making, other than the bag in this video, is Spike the Dragon from Jess Huff. And I'll put the picture of the pattern here. And... I bought the supplies that's within this bag right here. This Hobby Lobby bag is full of yarn to make spike. So I'm gonna go go get started on the granny squares just because I have that's less work. I actually do want to finish those first. I can always crochet it together tomorrow. Um, also, Pochita was supposed to be a keychain. Obviously, that's why it's got this on it. Pochita came out the size of a Christmas ornament, so Pochita will not be. A granny, granny square. I certainly hope not. A keychain. It did have a tongue right here, but I just did not like the way it looked, so I took it off. I had like a big pink dot right here. I didn't like it, so I took it off, and I think this looks a lot better. Like it just fits the theme, the color theme, way better than orange, black, and silver, and then pink right in the middle of the face. So, and then like always, I use the silver tinsel yarn. Let's see if it'll focus. Probably not. To make it look like it actually has a metal in it. You can't really see it, like it doesn't sparkle, but you can kind of see it in there to make it look like it's metallic, even if it's not. You cannot see it at all, but trust that it's in there. See the tinsel? Okay. So I'm going to get started on the granny squares. Hopefully I can get those knocked out by tonight. Start on spike later tonight or even tomorrow. Um, I still don't have a job. I'm trying to get someone in the HR department of Walmart to pick up the phone. I called four times yesterday, and I called four times today, and nobody will answer, and it's actually very aggravating. So I'm going to crochet now to forget all my troubles. Alright, I've got my crochet buddies. Uh, one tried to take a bath in the water dish. Can you guess which one? Won't name any names, but we can get started now. i got my manager and my assistant manager, so...
Okay, it is now the next day. I just realized my bed and behind me is still a mess, so we're not gonna look back there. So yesterday, I finished all of these. So now that's just left is to sew them together. And I have started on the parts for Spike. So far I've made um, his ears, two little ears, and he's a dragon, so he has to have his flames, obviously. Um, at first I really wasn't gonna make these, but then I decided he's a dragon, so why not make them? I think what I'm gonna do is make like a, I don't know if water would be enough to hold them in place, so like a, like a glue water mixture and soak this in it and then pin it down so the flame will stay straight and not be all like it is right now. So I think I'm gonna use the rest of this yarn to make a two-tone hat because I think it'll look really cool with this and, and black. So that's probably gonna be the project for this video. Uh, I am in the middle of one of Spike's feet right now. And then his little nails are worked directly into the into the foot. I forgot what that was called all of a sudden. So I'm still working on him. Oh and I finished his bottom lip. And since it's a Jess Huff pattern, she said you can either crochet this directly on here when you attach it like this. Or you can put Velcro on the mouth to be able to remove it. And I think that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so right now I'm working on the last of attaching the granny squares to make the uh, layout of the bag. I work in a very tight space, so I can't show you the whole thing at once. Um, but I had just have the last of the square to do, and then I get to fold it and crochet it all together, which is just crocheting the sides. So um, I didn't. Lately I have been in such a place of like crochet burnout, which I know happens to everybody from time to time. But crocheting is also the one thing that keeps me from feeling like I'm going insane sometimes. And it keeps my mind busy. And so to be in a place of where I don't want to do this, but it's one of my only hobbies, is a very weird, weird place to be in. Obviously I have other hobbies, like I really like to read. That's about it. <laughs> um, I like to write. I have several stories on Wattpad, but I don't think any very many people use Wattpad anymore, which is understandable because it's been around for a long time. But and I like to take care, obviously take care of my pets. If I didn't like them, I wouldn't have them. But I don't know. I mean, I've been in a very weird place with crocheting lately. I think making those swirled granny squares that turned out so horribly kind of traumatized me there a little bit. So now, once you get... See if I can zoom out some more. That's it. That's as far as I can zoom out. Once you get to this point where they're all sewed together, uh, what you do is you obviously you turn it over. And then the layout of this um, makes it so that here in this center square is where you fold it to make the bottom of your bag. And then you'd bring, oh, obviously it's upside down, so you bring it up like this, and this is the bottom of your bag, and then you bring in the sides like this, on both sides, and that, this is your bag, right? And then you just sew, or crochet, I'm going to crochet it because I'm not getting out sewing supplies you just go here and I just crochet one long line and just turn my work as I get to the edge so from here to here to here 
to the top and then you stop at the top. When I first made these, I accidentally crocheted all the way to the point and my bag had the tiniest opening. I couldn't get anything to it into it. So you stop here on both sides so you have this whole opening at the top. Which now that I've made these bags a few more times obviously makes more sense. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then the straps are really, really easy. Um, I didn't make the straps um, on the first or second bag that I made like this, but on the one I made with the granny squares, the swirled ones, I did, and it's really simple. You just pick a point and you crochet along. You can do whatever kind of stitch you want, single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. Um, I wouldn't recommend anything more than a half double crochet though because when you put weight in the bag and it weighs it down, it's going to stretch out really far. So you crochet all until you get to the point and you do three in your point. Do three in your point. And then you chain from the point, you chain however many you want. I think for my last bag I did like 75 to give it like a medium size. So for like a short... Um, Sorry, my brain just stopped working and now I don't know what words are. <clears throat> For a short bag handle, I was going to say um, hag bandle, and those are not even words. For a short bag handle, you would chain maybe like 40, 45. For a medium, between like 75 and 85, and then for obviously a large strap, you would do 100, 150. Um, I personally prefer a medium sized strap just because no typically I wear like a lounge fly backpack purse thing and I don't want to have so many things hanging on my shoulders so I put a medium strap so when I carry it in my hand and it's weighed down with stuff in it the straps aren't so long that the bag is touching the ground because that's kind of gross so zoom back out so I'm gonna just do I'm, I'm just gonna do this part I might do the handles tomorrow because I really want to get back to working on spike the dragon so So this is where I'm at right now. I don't know. I want. I really want to put the spike or the spikes, the fire for spike, in like a Mod Podge or glue and water mixture, because I don't like the way it's all like weird looking. But I think if I put it in the glue and water mixture, that it will stiffen up so much that the Velcro won't stick to it. Because I have like sticky Velcro tabs, like round ones that I got from Walmart that you just stick on here and then you have Velcro on your item. I could always sew it on, but I'm, I really don't want to do all the extra work because I'm lazy. So I will decide that at the end, I suppose. So I'm going to do this, probably get to the handles tomorrow, and that's where I am as far as updates. I think it's a uh, third day in to both of these projects, so I made pretty good progress today on this um, yeah I wouldn't say sewing it together is the longest part because I think making the granny squares is about equally as long so putting them making the granny squares and putting them together takes about the same amount of time for me so I will see you some point in the near future with some oh and I had to weave in all my ends I didn't even mention those most of them I tried to do while I was crocheting, so I only have a few, that's not even in, that's just a random piece of yarn. I only have a few that I'll try to get while I'm sewing in the, or sewing the edges and making the straps. So I will see you back when I am done. Okay, it is very hot in these clothes, so I'm going to do this as fast as possible just so I can take them off. Um, I have not made any progress on the bag, but this is where I am with it. And I have spent most of my time yesterday working on Spike, Dante. So a lot of his pieces are in here. I finished the tail last night. You cannot see the tail and the wings and the spikes. And I have a foot. I have part of a foot right here. This is what I stopped at last night. A little foot. So I'm going to try to... Um, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna finish the bag tonight and tomorrow I'll get back to Dante the dragon. Uh, so wish me luck. Um, it's hot in these. I don't know what made me think that 
I should wear two long sleeves to dinner in California. Apparently I'm just a dummy. So I'm gonna take my clothes off, put on some comfy pajamas, and get to work. Alright, I thought before I slip into my PJs for the night, um, I would do a real quick update. My hair is flying everywhere. When it's clean, it tends to stick up a lot. Also, I'm sitting in direct line of the fan, so that's fun. So, I finished the bag. I have it hanging right here. I made the handles a little longer than I did on the last one. I really like this yarn. I, I, I think these came out really well. It's pretty, you know, medium sized, so I'm very happy with this. And then I just finished this. Like, I literally just finished it. Turn on the camera. The dinosaur. Dante. <laughs> his um, body. And then his legs I attached before I stuffed it just because I wanted to sew them on the inside. And make sure they were secure. So I'm going to stuff this. And then I'm going to start on the head. And the head is the last piece I need for him. I believe. I think so. So he should be done within tonight or tomorrow at some point. I'm excited for what this is going to become, so. Alright, I'm going to do just a really quick late night update from my PJs. It is 12.42 p.m. A.M.? A.M. Um, phone is not one to cooperate tonight, but when does it ever? Um, so I know I told you that I finished the bag, so I'm not going to show you again. I don't know if I told you that I finished the body. I don't think I did. So this is his body with his legs. Um, I appreciate uh, Jeff. Jeff? <laughs> Jess, I am so sorry. I appreciate <laughs> Jess making her patterns um, more easy for people to make because she has really started to adapt them for people to make all the limbs able to be like crocheted into the body because so many people who make amigurumi or like animals, stuffed animals, hate having to sew on body parts after. I personally don't hate that. I, I just prefer to make everything, sew it all together so I can choose the placement of the things that I'm making instead of trying to follow the pattern because sometimes, you know, sometimes the pattern just now, not that it's like poorly written, but just sometimes I end up a few stitches short or extra, usually extra. Um, and so things don't line up when, like they're supposed to when you crochet the stuff into the pattern instead of just sewing on, on sewing it on after. So like, this is the face, this now, I'm obviously not done with it yet. And I hope it's going to get a little bigger. Um, but you are, according to the pattern, supposed to sew on... I don't know which side's on top of the bottom. You're supposed to sew on the lip where the flames are gonna go, but I didn't because I wanna be able to sew it on myself. And even like um, for the eyes that she puts in the pattern, she marks like the indent of where you would put them and you're supposed to indent the head halfway through and I just don't do that. Not because it, for one, well, honestly, because it feels like too much work to try to get the head stuff at the right amount of stuffing to then put in the eyes and do the face shaping while trying to then not disturb the stuffing after to make sure the head stays the right shape. I prefer to just make the head plain and then put the eyes in like right at the end right before so I can put the backs on them and then um, do all of the face shaping after. Luckily in this pattern she said exactly where to put the eyes round, between rounds 15 and 16, 18 stitches apart. That is so helpful. I love Jess Huff patterns even though I just called her Jeff because I combined her first and her last name. We're not gonna we're not gonna tell her that okay but um yeah so we're not gonna tell her that I combined her name and her name is now Jeff. <laughs> um, I don't even think I have eyes big enough for this pattern. I didn't even read which size she used. Hopefully I do. If not, I might have to open some new ones. Um, 
I said all that to say I appreciate her making her patterns more accessible to people who are too lazy to do all the sewing afterwards. But I am not one of those people. But I still love her patterns. I've made a lot of them. Um, I actually have... I actually have this one right here. It's a little... Dirty, because my birds sit on it and pick at it, and it, that's so it's peeling. I made this for someone who passed away before I could get it to them. I wish I had somewhere safer to put it, because my birds are kind of tearing it up. Like, you can see the backside still looks pretty good, but the front, mm, not so much. I don't, I don't even think I could put him in the laundry. Maybe if I did it, like, with a full load of clothes, but... Probably not. So he just sits up here on my little, where all my other stuffed animals are. And I appreciate him from a distance. So I'm gonna go wash my hands because I touched my nose while I was talking. And then I am gonna try to finish up the head tonight and I'll assemble the small things I can tonight. Like even just sewing the head onto the body. And I have all the pieces ready. I just have to put everything together. So he should be ready tonight. If not tonight, definitely tomorrow. And then he'll be up for sale probably through my Instagram, which will be linked below, um, for 80 I'm going to just start charging 80 for all of Jess Huff patterns because I think that's what they're worth. And her patterns are pretty much all the same size. I charge by size, not by, like, minimum wage. For, if you go to my Instagram, did I show the quokas that I made in a video? I don't think so. Go to my Instagram if you want to. And look at the post there with the quokas. I charged 55 for those. I did the math. If I had charged minimum wage here in California according to just eight hours, which I probably put more than eight hours of work into them, I would have been charging $256 for those. So the person I sold them to got a really good deal. And so I think because of that, I'm gonna start raising my prices just a little bit uh, because I, I like I feel bad charging what for what things are worth because I know that times are hard right now but I am not gonna keep letting myself get ripped off making these things that take a lot of hard work and effort you know and I think if more people started getting into handcrafting things they would realize like this stuff is worth way more than people are made to pay for it because this is like hours of my life that I've spent doing this that are never I'm never gonna get back. And so I don't have anything else to say, I guess I'll just stop mid sentence. Anyways, I'm gonna go wash my hands. I just touched this. I will lysol this, go wash my hands, come back to finish the head. Just finished the head. Finally, this was the last piece. Now I just get to sew it all together. So, whatever your name is, Dante, I'm gonna call you Charlie just for that. I'm calling you Charlie. When I get this done, then it'll be done and ready for sale. Depending on how long this video is after I put the the body together, I might end it or just continue on with the hat that I want to make with the leftover variegated yarn. We'll see. So. Um, I was at Hobby Lobby today looking for these things called Ami Sticks, and obviously Ami is short for Amigurumi, which is the Japanese word for a stuffed doll, and I couldn't find them, so I bought a pair of knitting needles instead, and they're basically to hold body parts together when you're sewing, so that you don't have to hold them together, therefore you can get your items on more straight. Um, brilliant. Whoever thought of using knitting needles instead? Genius. So I'm just going to quickly sew all this together, not quickly, it's going to be quickly for you because I'm going to skip most of it, but at the end, he should be done. 
and then we can start calling him by the right name. I gave him blue eyes because I didn't know I had black ones that were the right size. I also have brown ones this size, but I feel like blue is going to look nice because his wings and his spikes are also blue, so it'll tie together. Um, I'm very excited. He's so cute. I can already tell he's going to be adorable, so I will meet you back when he is finished. I was going to film the end of my video and Dante's all the way over there. Hold on. Wait, you want to see a secret? What are you doing back there? Making a mess. That's what you're doing. Nice. Okay. I finished him. Look, he's so cute. This is the first Jess Huff pattern, not Jeff, that I've made where he actually stands up on his own. And it's not big. Bigger than I thought it was going to be. He is... He's super cute. Rarely do I make patterns that I wish I had would have made two at a time so I could keep one for myself. Well, it would help if I didn't have the ruler upside down. He is, including the horns, right at about 10 inches tall. I am so happy he stands up on his own. I'm going to show you here on my desk. See, he stands up on his own. Nothing is supporting him. And then the flames. I really wish I would have put him in like a Mod Podge mixture. Or something to stiffen him up. Just so they wouldn't be all like like they are. But I don't think... I did attach them with Velcro. I'm not going to take it out though because I only have one free hand. Oh, I guess I could just... I have... Oh, I was saying I've acquired a hat. But then it flew off. I attached it with Velcro. So it could be taken out. And I put the rough part of the Velcro on here so you could just close the mouth and it would stay closed. So, this one's available now. Also, I sewed this on. You can kind of see where I sewed it. And then, since it was raising up a lot on the edges, I just went in with some craft bond and then just pinned it down until it dried. So, I am really happy with this one. Jess makes the best crochet patterns. I've ever seen in my life and I mean that genuinely and sometimes it no fighting please sometimes it just baffles me how these beautiful patterns are 100% free all of the time they shouldn't be but they are and that to me that's amazing so the only thing I'm working on now is the hat I started it last night I only got this far after I finished Dante um, so I'm gonna put the free pattern for the hat in the description it's really, really easy. Chain 50. If you work in the, the back hump of the chain and it leaves both loops free, you only have to chain 50 because technically when you go into the back hump of your chain, you're not losing a stitch. If you're going to work into like the top loop like you would normally have a chain, chain 51. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just chain 51. And then do I did single crochet for my first row just to build up the chain and then half double crochet in the back loops only for 25 rows and then you can either make two 25 um, row panels and sew them together or just make one 50, 50 row panel and then just sew the ends and cinch the top. I'm doing half this and half black so I'm going to do 25 of this and then I'll just change my color at my last stitch of my last one and just change to black and do my next 25 rows and then I'll have my hat that I probably won't get to wear because summer is trying to make a comeback here in California. So I'm not going to make this video much longer. If I finish the hat I'll probably put that in the next video. I'm sure I'll find something else to make here soon. My mom mentioned something to me about one of her friend's daughters wanting a giraffe so maybe I'll just get started on that. I'm pretty sure Jess has a giraffe pattern that I can follow because she has like her safari set. So I'm gonna look into that. I don't even think I have yellow yarn enough. I'd have to go shopping. I don't have a job though which means someone would have to buy Dante. <laughs> Ew that was so cringe. Sorry. I will never never do that again. <laughs> um, so that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Sorry that I ended it on a cringy note.
I finished my bag. It's right back there. And I will see you next time. Hopefully soon. I know, right? When I think of something else to make that nobody wants to see. Excuse me. Excuse me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you going? What is happening? What is happening? Are you stuck?